Uh, welcome, welcome to another uh, Ask the Expert um, from Link Software Technologies. As all of you know, I'm not the expert. So um, today with me, we have Nick and we have Sam from Rapida. First, just tell us a little bit about uh, your company. Uh, so Rapida Systems, we were founded in 2004. We're actually a spin-off from the University of York, the real-time systems department there. Uh, we provide on-target software verification tools and services around verification uh, globally, uh, primarily to aerospace and automotive customers, um, and that's commercial uh, and military. We've got offices in the UK and US, uh, and the, the two key things relevant to our chat today is our uh, primary tool suite, which is called RVS, otherwise known as Raptor Verification Suite. Within there, we've got tools uh, for execution time analysis, structural coverage analysis, uh, managing and authoring tests, uh, and RTOS scheduling visualization. So that's the kind of the core suite of tools. Uh, and then of particular relevance uh, for our discussion today is the CAST32A compliance package as well, uh, which is a combination of services and tooling uh, for meeting CAST32A objectives. Uh, for multi-core processors in avionics. Nick, you're talking there about multi-core. They've yep. been around a while. Um, why now in avionics? Why is there so much of a discussion about it in this specific set of applications? Yeah, good question, Ian. Um, so firstly, there's a, a good incentive to upgrade, firstly, in the uh, terms of swap or size, weight, and power. So being able to fit um, more functionality into complex software applications within a multi-core processor is, uh, is a really big benefit compared to you know, what we can do with single core processors. So that's the kind of positive aspect. We've also got the availability question. Uh, aerospace uh, and embedded hardware in general um, is a very small part of the overall chip manufacturer's market. And they're not gonna keep making single cores just for us indefinitely, well, not necessarily. So future-proofing supply chain is also very important. And there's also the means, the framework, um, the guidance now uh, for uh, how the certification authorities like um, the FAA want us to approach multi-core verification for aerospace. So we've got CAS 32A um, already, the position paper. We've got AMC 20193 coming in the fairly near term. Uh, so that gives people a bit more confidence to, uh, to address these things. Got it. In terms, of, in terms of challenges, there are certainly some challenges there, however. Uh, firstly, the interference caused by uh, competition for shared resources in the multi-core processor are well known. It's like a memory or something like that, right? Absolutely. So whether it's main memory or the system bus, uh, the, these things are shared and you know, the competition for them uh, can, can cause problems and that can affect timing behavior quite substantially. So identifying those interference channels, understanding them and analyzing them in your system uh, is, is really critical uh, to making them safe for use in aerospace. It's also the, the hardware itself is too complex to model um, on a computer to, uh, to mimic. So static analysis isn't appropriate for multi-core processors. The models are too complex, it's pretty much intractable. Uh, and the results you would get from examining the pathological worst case behavior, for example, uh, would be so pessim pessimistic, they wouldn't be worth, you know, if you were to account for them, you probably wouldn't get any real benefit over using a single core system. Finally, um, there's assumptions we need to, to test uh, beyond that, which is when we're using things like PMCs, uh, performance monitoring counters, are we sure they're counting the right things in the right ways? Uh, is there partitioning already in the hardware or the RTOS? Is it working as expected? Uh, all of these are complex challenges that need to be addressed uh, in terms of verifying the multi-core system. So as, as Rapida, as a software company, do you just um, sit there saying that this is really a hardware problem? Um, or do you think it's, uh, and the, the, the sort of hardware people are sort of saying, hey, Rapida, this is all your fault. Where, where do you see this, this challenge? Is it, is it a hardware problem or a software problem? Well, it's, it's a bit of both, really, which feels like a cop-out answer, but it's, 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 really, it's, it's really true. So fundamentally, 
the hardware is the root of the problem. As soon as you have something which is a shared resource, there has to be some sort of arbitration for access to that shared resource. There, there is going to be some scope for some contention to occur between um, simultaneous tasks on different cores. Um, but hardware can also be a part of the solution. So um, many um, hardware products that are available on the market now um, for multi-core, um, that they offer things like hardware partitioning mechanisms to, for example, partition the cache to allocate some of it to e each core. Um, but then again, in, in software, um, software architecture can be part of the problem or it can indeed ameliorate it. Um, if you naively take um, four, four single core um, applications and say, oh, I'm just going to put one in each core of a multi-core system and I'm done, um, you might have a bad time of it. Um, but if you sit down, you work out exactly where different um, applications running on different cores are using different resources, uh, then that's the point that you can start um, being intelligent about how, how you're using your resources to minimize the scope for contention. Maybe talk a little bit more about, you know, this area and what, what Rapid is doing, maybe in terms of research and um, Nick had mentioned CAS32A. So maybe talk a little bit about what things you're doing with customers, research, um, other things to, to in this area of multi-core SERP for avionics. Yeah, so um, Rapid has been actively interested in um, multi-core safety critical for uh, well over 10 years now. Um, and so there has been R&D going on in the background for quite some time. Um, a couple of years ago, we set up our internal multi-core team explicitly to handle multi-core projects and to work on multi-core tooling development. Um, so we do already have um, support in well, across a lot of our products for uh, multi-core um, multi tracing, multi-core analysis. Um, we're continuing to invest heavily in our R&D um, and this is how um, Rapid and Lynx have come to work together now actually. Um, there is a European Union funded project, a Horizon 2020 project, um, which Rapid are involved in um, with one of Lynx's customers. Um, and so um, it, it is a, it's been a good opportunity for us to um, interact and work out how our tooling can better support um, Lynx, Lynx Secure um, and their Artos offering. Um, and through this project, we're also looking to uh, upgrade the um, technology readiness of our of our product, um, make it a lot more slick. That's great. So Sam, um, talk a little bit more, maybe go to the next level of detail of how Rapida and Lynx are working together. Yeah, so I mean, on a very high level, um, our Rapida tools are Artos agnostic. Um, we can work with any Artos, um, but um, Lynx have been quite excited about their um, tunables, tracing and telemetry, and their three Ts, um, and lots of the development work they're doing on multi-core. Um, and here at Rapita, we're also quite excited to see how, um, how we can use these to help our tools really hook into uh, what Lynx is doing on a multi-core system and get a, a really, really deep, low-level view on exactly what's going on and how we can use that to help understand how systems are uh, executing and then how, how we can optimize these systems to work as, as um, efficiently and as safely as possible on a multi-core system. What other challenges are there um, that you, you still see that are out there to solve? Multi-core certification is always going to be more complex than single-core certification because th there is just fundamentally more to do and more things to test. One of the problems we face at the moment is actually it's not 100% certain exactly what certification authorities want. Um, mm. we, we can construct a very good argument that a particular um, piece of software will meet its deadline in a multi-core system. Um, but whether that is necessarily exactly what will satisfy all the search authorities first time round, actually that, that's, that's still an unknown at the moment. The message is that yes, we're on a good trajectory, um, but we're not quite there yet and no one's quite there yet. I think it's worth also mentioning that we are actively working with several customers at the moment, um, some of whom are, you know, putting extremely uh, critical systems, DALE systems uh, that are being, you know, the, the software is being hosted on multi-core processes with all the cores turned on. So this isn't 
conceptual or something we're talking about in the future. This, this process is happening now, but it's not a quick one. Uh, so we are, you know, learning the real lessons of doing this work for customers. Um, and I don't, I don't think we'll be too far off, uh, you know, going all the way to kind of final certification in the near future. Sam, you probably have more up-to-date information on that than me. Yeah, I mean, we, we have customers who are on, uh, well, they are doing full certification projects with products that they intend to certify and apply. Um, so we are, we are going through this process right now. Um, That's great. Um, Nick, how do we, we talked about a few things here. Um, how do people get more information on what you've talked about, like CAST 32A and some of the other things that Rapido are working on? Absolutely. Um, so I think the first place I'd point people uh, is to our website, which is rapidsystems.com. Uh, you'll find a wealth of information about our CAST 32A compliance package and some of the, there's plenty to discover on there about the wider questions and challenges of multi-core timing analysis uh, and how we can help you with your multi-core project. Um, so that, that's the starting place. And uh, we've also got our multi-core white paper on there as well, which is uh, well worth a read. Great. Uh, Nick and Sam from Rapida, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ian. Thank you.